I want to just share a little reflection on sports and faith. I'm going to move so I know you're, some of you are behind pillars. And then at the end, uh, it'll be a fairly short talk. And then we'll do just some announcements before we head out. And feel free, there's still some pizza. If you want to get some more pizza before we go, uh, please do that. So let's pray in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Lord, we thank you and praise you for this evening. We thank you for every single person in this room, for the gift of life, for the parents choosing life. We ask you to fill us with your Holy Spirit. Help us to know that we need you, that we need to tether ourselves to you. Bring us out of the darkness into the light. We thank you for the gift of sports as well, that it may be a medium used to grow closer to you. We ask all this through Christ our Lord. Amen. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. So most of you know my story, so I'm not going to go into my story. But I want to share just a, a few reflections on why we're doing these camps. They started, I think Mike Sweeney started the Mike Sweeney Catholic Baseball Camp about seven years ago in Kansas City and Seattle, where he used to play. And I had met him at a, a retreat for the Catholic Athletes for Christ. So this is the group who organizes all of the priests in Major League Baseball. So they're the group that connected me with the Chicago Cubs to become their chaplain. And so Mike was telling me about this camp, and I thought, I've got to experience this. So I went out to Seattle about five years ago, and as I experienced it, I thought, this is amazing. And as Mike's uh, slogan says, we, we tell the greatest story ever told, the story of Jesus Christ, through the greatest game ever played, baseball. Now I know there's other sports, and you may like uh, other sports better than baseball, but you know, as you know, we've, we've expanded these camps to soccer and football, and hopefully we're going to expand to baseball and volleyball and, and maybe even fine arts so that we can reach kids you know, who like different things. But what I found in these camps, you know, this will be our fourth camp for baseball. What I found is sports is a, a vehicle in which we can touch the hearts of young people, that we can plant seeds for Jesus Christ. As Father Mark said so well at the, at the homily today, you know, yes, our goal is that you're going to become better baseball players uh, by the end of the week. And you're going to have great instruction. You're going to have some major league ball players here. You're going to have some college and high school coaches and players. So the instruction is going to be first class. But you're also hopefully going to grow closer to Jesus Christ. Our goal as a team is that you're going to come to know him through us and through one another. And I've learned so much through sports. That's what I want to share with you tonight. You know, I got to play at a fairly high level at Division I baseball. And I remember uh, in 1989, so that was my junior year in college, and we were loaded with talent. We were nationally ranked number one uh, in the United States, and we had like a few first round draft picks on the team. When it came to the regional tournament to go to the College World Series, we were upset by North Carolina, a team that didn't have the talent that we had, but they played better as a team. And we were devastated. After that tournament, they had the Major League Draft, and we had eight guys get drafted. It was a whole starting lineup, actually, except me. And I was devastated because I thought I should have been drafted. But God always has his plan. So the next year, I'm the only returning starter uh, a lot of guys who hadn't had much playing time had the opportunity to start the next year. We were not even ranked in the top 25 in the nation. We weren't even ranked in the top five or six in the conference. But we came together as a team, and we had a common goal of making it to the College World Series. We were less talented, but more united. And it was that year that we made it to the College World Series, much to the surprise of everybody, including ourselves. And I learned so much that year that that's what we're called to as, as Catholic Christians. 
What the evil one wants to do is to divide and conquer and make us think that we're all alone and to act as individuals. And when we act as individuals, we can accomplish very little. But when we act together for a common purpose, then amazing things can happen. I once heard the analogy, if I gave you one toothpick and asked you to break it, could you do it? Absolutely. It'd be easy. But if I tied 10 toothpicks together, or 20, and said, can you break these? Try it. <laughs> You'll break your fingers first before you break the toothpicks. And it's a great analogy as, as we walk this journey together to realize that when we are bound together on a mission for Christ, on a mission for God, if you will, then nothing can stop us. The team that we have that puts on this Catholic baseball camp, we have about 12 people. We've been doing this now for four years, and we've become a family. We don't really need to meet monthly to plan this now because it's just become part of what we do. But we get together because we enjoy being together, and we're strengthened as as Catholic Christians. And if you think about what Jesus did with his apostles, you know, he sent them out two by two, and then he, did he just leave them out there on their own? No, they would do their mission, and they would come back together, and they would share their stories, and they would strengthen and encourage one another. And then they'd have the strength to go back out and do it again. And so that's what we try to do here, is to build a community of faith so that you know that you're not alone. And not just for the children, too, but for the parents as well. As was said at Mass, uh, you know, Bishop said, this is a camp about marriage and family. And so while the kids are on the field in the morning, we're going to have a little retreat right in here for the parents, anyone who wants to attend. And different uh, members of our team will be given talks, and there'll be time for sharing for the parents as well. And we've done that the last couple years, and we found that Parents really enjoy it. And it's an opportunity to share maybe some struggles that you have and to realize that you're not alone, that we're walking this journey together, and with that strength, we can get through anything. And so I want to invite uh, any of the parents, you're, you're welcome at each of the masses each morning. We're going to begin at 8 a.m. and then follow that up with the retreat for the parents from 9 to 11 here. And while you're doing that, the uh, the players will be out on the field, they'll, get, they'll have warm-ups, and then they'll have an opportunity to do some drill work in the morning. And then in the games, there's going to be uh, time, in the afternoon, there's going to be time for games. Lunch will be here in this cafeteria each day, and, you know, we, we've ordered extra lunches. We, we hope that we can feed whoever's able to be here. Of course, we're going to feed the, the young people first, uh, but if there's extra food, you're more than welcome to partake as well. So in, in sports, I learned the importance of teamwork. I also learned the importance of discipline. When I was in Mississippi State, we practiced uh, five hours a day. We practiced every day from one to six. Eat dinner, do homework, go to bed, get up for classes, and repeat the process five hours a day. Because coach believed that, you know, when we got into the game situation, we needed to be able to react and not think, oh gosh, what do I have to do? We were drilled so much that we knew exactly what to do. Just like I imagine firemen and policemen and Navy SEALs do, they practice so that when they get in the situation, they know exactly what to do. We're gonna have opportunity to, to do drill work on the field, but more importantly, we need to be disciplined as followers of Christ. What's the word you hear in discipline? Disciple. disciple. It's not a coincidence that they come from the same word. Disciple means a student or a learner. And so we're here as students. We're going to learn the game of baseball, but we're also going to learn what does it mean to be a follower of Christ. And I know as a follower of Christ and as a priest, I need to be disciplined. And so I, I get up in the morning and do an hour of prayer. This is what I choose to do. Because I know the most important relationship I have in my life is with Jesus Christ. And I don't give Jesus whatever time I have left over. I give him my best time. And one of the things I do as I work with our seminarians is a day without prayer and exercise is not a balanced day. We need to take care of our soul. We need to take care of our bodies so that we're ready to give whatever the Lord wants us to give. 
But if we let either one of those go, again, things are going to get out of balance. And so we're going to try to learn the virtue here this week of, of discipline, of hard work, to know that to be a disciple of Christ is not easy, but it's so worth it. And we need to invest time into this relationship. I couldn't in college just throw my glove on the field and hope that I'd become a good baseball player. I had to invest time and energy and sweat and sometimes even blood to become the best ball player I could be. The same is true for Christ. Of those first disciples, the first 12 apostles, how many died as martyrs? Do you know? Of course, Judas. We know what happened to Judas. <laughs> but all the rest of them, except St. John, died as a martyr. Anybody here ready to die for Christ? I remember my first day in seminary, the priest told us, he said, if you're, if you're not ready to die for Christ, it's time to leave. And I, I just said, I just want to be a priest. I don't want to be a martyr. <laughs> but what I, what I realized he was saying is, more and more, this world is going against Christ, isn't it? Those of you as parents know how hard it is to raise your children in the faith. And so we need to prepare our children to say that life is hard. Don't panic when things go against you, because it's part of following Christ. Did he tell us that? Yes. So if you're going to follow me, you're going to have to pick up your cross daily and follow me. This is not going to be easy. So as parents, I want to encourage you. Have you heard about the helicopter parents? You know, who hover over their children? I can't do, I can't do a helicopter sound. You know, the newest form of parenting are called Zamboni parents. Have you heard that one? You know what a Zamboni machine is for hockey? It clears the ice, you know, makes it perfect. And so Zamboni parents clear the ice before their kids so they cannot stumble and fall ever. And are we doing them a favor? No. No, because the first time that they do stumble and fall, they say, what is this? Nobody prepared me for this. And they panic. And so we need to prepare our children to say, life is hard. There's going to be some heavy crosses, but know that you're not alone. That Jesus is going to walk this journey with you. That I will walk this journey with you. And together we can get to anything. I remember when my mom died from cancer. Uh, fortunately, I was in my first year of seminary, and I thought, I can never get through this. This is the worst possible situation in my life, as the person I love more than anyone else in the world died. But I was in the seminary, and I had this group of brothers who supported me through that journey. At my mother's wake, priest after priest showed up, and the strength that that gave me and my family to say, you're not alone that God willing your mother is with the Lord and we're going to be with you as you suffer and struggle my friends we're all a community here we're all here to help one another through this and sports is a way to realize that you know we're on a common mission the best coaches will set a vision for the team like our coach said you know our, our vision is going to win the college world series and this is how we're going to get there and if you buy into the vision this energy that builds as we move toward that goal. The best coaches in the spiritual life will say, okay, here's our vision, and Christ has laid out the vision, and what is it? It's heaven. And he showed us how to get there. You know, by, by staying close to the Lord through the sacraments, by getting into the Word of God, by being people of prayer, and coming to know the Lord Jesus personally. We hope to instill those characteristics and those virtues in these young people this week. And along with that goes the great virtue of perseverance. You know, to say when things do get hard, to not give up. There were times, I remember when I was seven years old, my parents, uh, we come from a, a musical family. Both of my grandmothers played the organ in their church. And so my parents said either uh, piano or guitar. So I, uh, I thought, I'll take the guitar. So I remember two weeks into it, I was ready to quit, throw in the towel. <laughs> but they said, you got to give it a year. You committed to this, and you got to stick through it while it's difficult. Great lesson. Fast forward to college. You know, I'm from Joliet. I go to Mississippi State, and homesickness hit me like a ton of bricks. 
I came home uh, the first Thanksgiving of my freshman year. My parents picked me up at O'Hare, and the first thing I tell them is, I'm not going back. <laughs> and my dad looked at me and he said, yes, you are. <laughs> he said, it'll be the biggest mistake of your life if you give up now. And what a great vision he had, because when I went back after Christmas break, it felt like home. And it became home for me, and it became one of the greatest experiences of my life. But I had to get through that difficult place. And not just to say, I'm, I thank God my parents didn't say, oh, that's okay, you, you gave it a try, you know, you can give up. No, we have to persevere through those difficult times. You know, I think I've shared this before, that one of the most difficult times on the baseball field for me was my freshman year of college. Uh, so I'm from, I'm from here, I'm the only Yankee on this team in, in Mississippi, and I was a natural second baseman. And so the coach came to me in the fall and he said, Bert, Pete, our third baseman, was also our closing pitcher. So he said, would you mind moving over to third base when he comes in to pitch? And I said, sure, you know, whatever is best for the team. And so the first time I played third base in my life, we're playing Auburn University, the SEC. We're at home, 10,000 people in the stands, and we're up five to two in the ninth inning. They bring Pete in the pitch, move me from second to third, and bring in another second baseman. So I'm getting ready, and I look up, and who's up to bat? but Frank Thomas. Now, if you don't know Frank Thomas, he's in the Hall of Fame with the Chicago White Sox. He's about 6'5", 260 pounds. Each of his legs is about this big around, like tree trunks. So Coach always told us to want the ball, and I was praying, please, don't hit it to me. So I'm playing like left field, third base. And what does he do? He hits a hard ground ball to third base, bangs off my chest, E5, man on first base. I'm like, okay, dust yourself off, get back in there. The next guy hits a ball to my left, and I'm thinking double play right away. I get ahead of myself, I drop the ball, first and second, nobody out. The next guy hits a ball to my left, as I'm moving to third base, and I'm thinking triple play, get out of the end. Drop the ball, base is loaded, nobody out. Now that the fans are starting to get a little restless, even though this, this is our home crowd. Well, to make a long story short, all three guys come around to score. They tie the game five to five. We finally get out of the inning, and I'm running to the third base dugout, which is right over there, but it felt like 30 miles away. And as I was running, I heard one voice out of this crowd say, we had to go all the way to Illinois to get this guy. <laughs> Well, we lost the game in 15 innings. I kept everybody around for an extra three hours. It was horrifying. I get back to my dorm room. I call my dad, and this is before you know, all these games are on TV, and I tell him what happens, what happened. And I said, Dad, I quit. These people hate me. I can't recover from this. You know, I'll never, I'll never get through this. And he said again, if you